One point in time, Mars had a, a much different environment, right? It appears highly likely that Mars had liquid oceans. NASA has recently reached an astonishing conclusion about its Mars rover project. The explanation behind it is even more surprising. There have been many strange sightings since humanity started dispatching expeditions to explore the mysterious planet Mars. NASA deployed four Martian rovers to the Red Planet, one of which, Curiosity, landed there in 2012 and is continuing exploring. A crashed UFO that is concealed among the rust-colored sands sparks curiosity and conjecture all throughout the world. On the other hand, NASA makes a surprising revelation right when everyone is waiting for answers. What mysteries lie beneath the Martian surface? What incredible discoveries did NASA make on Mars that seem impossible to believe? Join us on a journey as we explore the secrets of the Martian landscape as NASA shuts down its rover. We have been captivated by the dusty red planet for ages. The more we uncover, the more mystified we become. Early, blurry views of Mars inspired stories of canal-building aliens. Modern science has proven that the planet's vermilion surface is devoid of massive engineering scars. However, that is of little consequence. Mars has always fascinated humans. We have attributed Martian characteristics to our gods, tracked its movement, and mapped its face in an effort to make sense of the red planet for millennia. Incorporating Mars into our artistic endeavors has been a priority. Also, since the space era began, we have launched over 50 hardware pieces, engineering wonders worth billions of dollars, at Mars. Many have failed, particularly in the beginning. And here we are, still enamored with Mars. Then why? Mars is not exceptional when compared to other known worlds. Not only is it not the most accessible, but it is also not the nearest, smallest, or brightest. It lacks the mystique of Venus and the ostentatiousness of Jupiter and Saturn, respectively. Thanks to a deluge of data and pictures collected by orbiters, landers, and rovers, the scientific arguments for why Mars is an attractive destination are multifaceted and ever-changing. Mars will remain a mystery as long as humans inhabit it. We will never fully comprehend it, but we will always be one step closer. It's this enormous game of tension. Even if our perception of Mars has evolved, the idea of establishing a colony there, far from Earth, has persisted. And this may be the most fundamental explanation for the planet's continued prominence in popular culture. Following Mars and its erratic course through the sky has been a human tradition since the dawn of civilization. Tracking this wandering star around the sky in the 3rd century BCE, the Sumerians noticed its ominous hue and linked it to the wicked god Nergal, who was the deity of pestilence and conflict. The king's and horse's demise as well as the results of harvests and conflicts, were foretold by its ebb and flow and fluctuating brightness. The hue is particularly significant in Aboriginal tradition, where it is associated with fire, or the local red-tailed black cockatoo, Cogolongo. The Maya of pre-Columbian America meticulously tracked the object's orbit around the sun, linking its motions to the changing seasons on Earth. The ancient Greeks linked it to Ares, their god of war, whom the Romans reimagined as Mars. There was always only one actual planet Mars, but there are a lot of different cultural Marses in play. Mars went from being a legendary character to the real world by the mid-1800s, all thanks to telescopes. As it came into focus, Mars became a planet with weather, shifting terrains and ice caps like Earth's. Even though the mapmakers' biases and whims affected the final results, Astronomers in the Victorian era drew the surface of Mars and presented their pictures as fact. One of such maps became famous all around the world in 1877. The Italian astronomer Giovanni Schiaparelli's depiction of Mars features a ruggedly outlined landscape with islands sprouting from a network of blue canals. Instead of following modern naming practices, Schiaparelli named the exotic features of his planet after locations in Mediterranean mythology and he packed a lot of detail into his map. According to Lane, this led to Schiaparelli's map being immediately regarded as authoritative. 
both the scientific community and the general public saw it as a potent symbol of reality. Following this came three decades of unbridled Mars mania, during which time any sane person could have been excused for thinking that clever Martians had constructed a canal network that extended throughout the entire planet. The eccentric aristocrat Percival Lowell, who had a major Mars fixation, is directly responsible for a lot of that zeal. Lowell, an affluent native of Boston and a graduate of Harvard University, read widely in both the scientific and popular realms and had a serious interest in astronomy. Based in part on Schiaparelli's maps, Lowell hurried to construct an observatory on top of a hill before the fall of 1894, when Mars would be closest to Earth and its sunlit side would be ideal for studying the alleged canals. He believed that extraterrestrial technology had created them. However, in 1907, due in part to a project he had financed, Lowell's tale started to unravel. That was the year that astronomers sent thousands of images of Mars to the public via telescope. According to Lane, planetary photography supplanted cartography as the standard for reliability. People started to doubt Lowell's maps once they could observe the discrepancy between pictures and maps of Mars. Mars with its ever-changing vistas and the faint hope of life beyond its icy surface had become an old friend by the early 1900s. New measurements showed that the Martian polar caps moved with the seasons, releasing a shadow that crept closer to the equator as it did so. In the 1950s, there were scientists who published theories in prestigious publications proposing that those dark spots must have been areas of lush flora that eventually withered away. All this scientific fervor fueled a trove of speculative fiction, from H.G. Wells's War of the Worlds and Edgar Rice Burroughs's Barsoom serials to Ray Bradbury's Martian Chronicles. Next, in 1965, the Red Planet was passed by NASA's Mariner 4 expedition. It turned the vibrant cultural playground into a grainy, cratered landscape by taking the first black and white close-up shots of Mars's surface. The planet's dry infertility was a severe letdown when finally observed. Humans' fascination with the possibility of Martian life, however, quickly returned. In 1971, Mariner 9 became the first spacecraft to orbit Mars. This accomplishment is much appreciated by modern Mars-focused scientists. Initially, Mariner was unable to see due to a tremendous dust storm that covered the entire planet. Up until the very end, Mars was making every effort to maintain an air of secrecy, Cabral explains. The camera caught a glimpse of the towering Tharsis Montes as the sand began to settle, a trio of volcanoes that were second in size only to nearby Olympus Mons. Valles Marineris, a rift valley to the east, is nine times longer than Arizona's Grand Canyon but looks quite similar. Most notably, scientists observed floodplains, deltas, channels, and valleys carved out by ancient rivers in the thousands of images captured by Mariner 9. Chemical indicators of water ice were also detected. This proved without a reasonable doubt that diverse Martian landscapes were originally shaped by torrents of water. Rekindling curiosity and discovering if life had existed on Mars, or perhaps still does, the realization that ancient Mars may have been a reasonably Earth-like home sparked a new set of inquiries in planetary evolution. Shortly after Mariner 9, NASA launched an even more daring mission. The twin Viking landers ultimately reached the Northern Hemisphere in 1976, allowing mankind to look down on the red planet for the first time. At that point in time, Scientists had previously established that Mars did not have a seasonal carpet of plants. Rather, the shifting shadows were caused by dust storms that whipped up sand from volcanic eruptions. They were also aware that the surface no longer had an excessive water flow. However, it remained unclear if the planet's soils were habitable, and astronomer Carl Sagan was not yet prepared to rule out the possibility of even more massive forms of life. Both Martian bacteria and footsteps in the sand were not detected by the Viking investigations. On the contrary, they uncovered soil perchlorate residues, which could mean the end of all carbon-based life as we know it. Photos sent back by Viking showed reddish rock-strewn plains that appeared to have been shot from any dry location on Earth. With each rover that touched down on Mars, 
1997's Pathfinder, 2004's Spirit and Opportunity rovers, and 2012's Curiosity rover, NASA provided even more detailed images of the red planet's barren surface. Together, the vehicles transmitted back almost 700,000 photos, and each one had a more advanced camera system. Now it's easier to picture ourselves in the rover's treads whenever we see its tracks in the ground or in robot selfies taken when they're sitting on the colorful rim of a crater. Theorizing about a face on Mars began with one of the roughly 50,000 photos captured by Viking 1. The image inspired tabloid headlines like Monkey Face on Mars and books like Richard Hoagland's The Monuments of Mars, in which Hoagland claimed, based on the photos, to have seen an entire city laid out on Mars with the precision of a master architect. I had indeed discovered some kind of artificially constructed Martian complex. People started to wonder about the neighboring planet and the possibility of life there after they saw the face on Mars, as it was dubbed. The problem is that many took it as evidence of highly developed extraterrestrial life. Indeed, there was a slight misunderstanding over the type of life that scientists were aiming to find on Mars, which was simpler forms of life rather than complex life forms that were carving elaborate faces into rocks. Upon initial examination, the scientific community was certain that the photograph was an eroded rock formation, most likely a mesa. The face on Mars is actually only an optical illusion caused by the way light reflects off the mesa. This has been proven by high-resolution images captured in 1998 and 2001. The surface of the globe is not uniformly erodible. Some regions are higher, while others are lower, because some parts are more resistant to erosion. At times, the relief formed by this process gives the illusion of a face in its shadow. The one thing that Mars has shown us is how easy it is to fantasize about life on the Red Planet. Mars has proved time and again that it is devoid of anything that could brighten our spirits, whether it is greenery, canals, or the much-debated possibility of fossils and meteorites. Then why are we launching another space probe to Mars to search for signs of life from billions of years ago, rather than for any living things there now? For all our obstinacy, our deepest yearning is for connection with other beings, for the knowledge that we are not an island in this vast cosmos. Humans, for the most part, need other humans to survive. And maybe that's true on a planetary scale as well. Although NASA rovers have recently discovered what appear to be extraterrestrial signs, Mars has tricked us before, and the planet's inner workings remain a mystery. Mars's enticing allure is reaching a crescendo for those who seek out extraterrestrial life. It is probable that bacteria are present in many recent observations made by Mars rovers, suggesting that life exists beyond Earth. If detected on Earth, the blend of carbon isotopes detected by NASA's Curiosity rover and Gale Crater's rocks would indicate the presence of life. Methane is a gas that is mostly created by biological processes on Earth. The rover has also observed both seasonal and erratic surges of this gas. The Perseverance rover, operated by NASA, has detected unusual purple coatings on the rocks of the Jezero Crater. Like Earth's desert varnishes, which flourish when bacteria are present, these coverings are common. However, researchers aren't prepared to say that our vermilion neighbor was formerly inhabited just yet. There is a great deal about Mars that we do not understand, including the planet's geology and chemistry, which may be hiding non-living occurrences that appear to be biological markers. Consequently, any intriguing indication of life on the red planet could be due to some as yet unknown feature of these elements. Since we are gazing at a foreign planet, there may be many things we haven't considered yet. According to scientists, the next stage in the hunt for life on Mars will involve returning samples to Earth. Here, using the most advanced technologies, we may try to answer one of humanity's oldest questions. Mars has virtually always had life in our imaginations. If not extraterrestrials, then certainly our own future selves. The hopes of technologically sophisticated societies verdant plants that bloom at certain times of the year, or even benevolent, gelatinous vegetarians were swiftly dashed by spacecraft findings. When we landed, we didn't have any ray guns, anything glowing, 
or anything saying hello. On the contrary, data gathered by NASA's Viking landers and photos taken from orbit confirmed that Mars does not support an abundance of habitable life. That kind of hung over Mars research for a long time, remarks Steele. In 1996, researchers revealed that microfossils, tiny, worm-shaped, mineralized artifacts that indicate life crawled across Mars' surface some 4.1 billion years ago, were found in a meteorite that had been collected from Antarctica's Allen Hills region. Those statements were vague and deeply controversial, sparking arguments that have not gone away. One bright spot, though. Curiosity has found several organic compounds in the crater throughout the years, which are the chemical components of carbon-based organisms. Also, it has found evidence of past hydrothermal activity, which may have produced energy by combining heat and chemical compounds with flowing water. Additionally, the rover has confirmed Earth-based observations that have perplexed scientists for over 10 years by observing periodic, huge pulses of gas and by determining that the crater's methane gas levels rise and fall with the changing seasons. On Earth, such a variation would be highly indicative of metabolically active organisms. There is always the possibility that processes whose details we do not quite comprehend are imitating the hallmarks of life, but no biological connection has been established for any of these findings thus far. It is only very late that the most peculiar and intriguing finding has come to light. Organic compounds with unusual carbon isotope ratios were discovered in a variety of rock samples taken from different parts of the crater by the rover. Isotopes are variations in the amount of neutrons an element's nucleus contains. There is a significant imbalance between the abundance of the heavier and lighter forms of carbon on Earth because organisms here favor using the lighter form in metabolic or photosynthetic activities. The same result was discovered at five different spots in Gale Crater. Lesser carbon isotopes were far more common than heavier ones in comparison to what has been observed in meteorites and the Martian atmosphere. These findings are consistent with carbon ratios measured in the Tumbiana Formation of Australia, an outcrop that dates back 2.7 billion years and contains the fossilized remains of methane metabolizing bacteria. These really depleted carbon isotope results are so intriguing so compelling. On Earth, the only way you do this is with biology, William says. But House, who led the analysis, says the story is far from clear. He and his colleagues offered three possible explanations for the imbalance. The most basic is the fact that the signal does in fact originate from long-gone bacteria. Mars could also be a remnant of an interstellar dust cloud that the solar system passed through in the distant past, which would explain its unusual carbon isotope ratio. Thirdly, the unusual signal could have been created by the interaction of UV light with Mars's carbon dioxide atmosphere. The answer is unknown to us. House states, it could have biological origins, or it could have none at all. According to the facts, all three hypotheses hold. Perseverance noticed many boulders covered with a purple, iron-rich covering, while it was traveling through Jezero. Bradley Garzinski of Purdue University is examining the coating and says it's completely new to rovers on Mars, even though rocks with other coatings have been found elsewhere on the planet. On Earth, these coverings are common in deserts where groups of bacteria that eat rocks live in harmony. Scientists know a lot more about the Earth settings where these varnishes originate, and that's important because it helps them understand the observation better. Even on Earth, Scientists must do thorough tests to determine if such a substance may have originated from life or some other mechanism. From a distance, that's a lot more difficult question to answer. The Martian system we are investigating is incredibly intricate and fascinating. For the time being, the only way to know for sure if life exists on Mars is to return samples to Earth and examine them using the best tools now available. Mars has proved time and again that it is not Earth. Our planet is not some Ice Age planet. It is a separate planet that is changing all the time, with certain processes that are similar to Earth and others that are completely foreign. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.